Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and recently I hosted the Lego Bionicle Golden Skinned Being Fan and Contest for fans to write in with artwork or mocks trying to depict the infamous Golden Skinned Being from Lego Bionicle. Who is the Golden Skinned Being? Well, the Golden Skinned Being is the fusion between a ton of different species in the Bionicle world, combining into one godlike being who has the power to grant your dreams, but unfortunately cannot control his power, being forced to grant the dreams of everyone around him. It was a really interesting character, an interesting design as described in the Bionicle story serials, and unfortunately not something we ever saw an official LEGO set of because it was quite soon after Bionicle was cancelled as a theme. But now, we actually have a model to showcase the golden skinned being in physical form. This is actually the second place winner of the contest because the first place winner was an art piece. And so, I have chosen to review the second place winner right here, which is a really cool, good looking model that is fully articulatable, that has so much life and character to it, so much detail. I can't wait to get into this review, so let's do it. This is the golden skinned being. Okay, so this is the winning build for the Golden Skinned Being Contest by Vara. This was the highest voted mock coming in at second place, whereas the first place winner was actually a piece of artwork, and so the honor of having the review is going to this particular build. Now Vara has packed in a ton of detail into the Golden Skinned Being here, and I am incredibly impressed by the building techniques and how it all came together, and I'm really excited to be able to showcase all of it to you because this is hiding so many different intricate secrets that that I feel like this warrants a full-scale review. Now, just a couple of things before we get started. As usual, for every single Bionicle fan and review, we will be taking a look at this character based on four different points. Number one is posability. Number two is building techniques. Number three is overall aesthetics, completely agnostic of its believability in the universe. And finally, number four is how well does this fit in the Bionicle world? And particularly for something like a fan and contest, can I see this as the character it is supposed to represent? And so we'll start off with the one that's easiest to showcase, which is posability. Now, the posability of this model is pretty interesting. It is dynamic in some ways and limited in others, as you would expect for a titan of this size. I'm going to start off with the legs to really showcase the range of motion you can get on the legs themselves. You can bend the legs back and forth. They are mounted via the friction joints introduced for LEGO Hero Factory, so you can actually get a good amount of articulation out of the legs themselves for the upper thighs. It's a little harder to move the legs upwards. They are just mounted on a standard Metru waist, so they really have to be splayed outwards to be able to display the character, but Overall, you can get a good range of articulation out of the legs, and especially when it comes to the knees, there's actually quite a lot you can do with the knees themselves. Showcasing one of the knees here, you can see that you can actually bend this back and forth on a multiple different sets of ball joints here. You have kind of three different sets of ball joints that you can use to bend the knees. The feet themselves are also mounted on the traditional piston element, so that's really cool that you can actually move that all around. And altogether, the legs have a really good range of articulation, especially because you actually actually have so much flexibility in the knee itself. Granted, in my opinion, it does look a little bit funky unless you actually have it fully closed up like so. I definitely feel like it looks better when the knees are fully straightened out. There's a lot of gaps in between the upper leg to the lower leg when you do bend the knees, but overall, it is done really nicely, and I like how much articulation you can get in the knees while still allowing you to get it into poses fairly easily. The same can be said for the head. The head is actually mounted on a few different ball joints, but it does have an articulatable neck. I really like how you can have a full range of articulation here, but it still retains some of the Paraka-esque look and feel, with the spine on the back here being really nice to be able to kind of sway back and forth as you bend the head. It looks really good when you go to the back here, where you can see the spine kind of start to bend back and forth like the Paraka heads when you move the head side to side. And the same can be said for the tail. The tail itself is mounted on a few different ball joints so you can kind of swing it back and forth. This is just mounted on a pin here like a lightsaber blade type element so that can sway back and forth. The tip of the tail is mounted on a ball joint and you can really get a nice degree of articulation out of the model itself. The only thing is that this particular LX spine piece does tend to pop out a little bit easily like you can see right there if you just don't pay attention to how you're playing around with it so you do just have to be very careful and the tail kind of has to stick out like this for it to be a fully functioning model. Now, preventing it from falling over, which sometimes it does tend to do, I feel like the feet could be a little bit bigger to support its weight. Now we can move on to the arms, and the arms are pretty good. Honestly, my only downside is that they just simply do not support the weight of even its own hands. 
As you can see here, and your mileage may vary depending on what pieces you use, but no matter what I do, I just simply cannot get this arm to stay in one position. It might be a little better if you want to get it in this sort of position right here, like it's kind of reaching upwards, but no, it still just keeps drooping downwards. The same can be said for the other arm. It's a little bit better because it is, again, depending on the parts you're using, but for the most part, the arms are just a little bit too heavy for the model's weight. The good thing, though, is that you can always add a friction add-on piece. It might compromise the aesthetics a little bit. Right now, it is very, very clean how the pieces fit together, but it will actually allow you to move the arms around and hold their positions, rather than right now, where they just tend to keep drooping downwards no matter what you do. Now, the hands themselves have articulatable fingers, so you can move all four of the fingers on each hand. It's just using a very simple piece here, just kind of the Chima fist element that they introduced for the Chima buildable figures, so nothing super crazy is going on there, but I do like how you can move the individual fingers should you please. But now we can move on from posability and take a look at the building techniques and I'm gonna spend the most time on building techniques because to me it's the coolest section and honestly I generally don't even know where to start. This is truly a masterpiece of a model from start to finish and from bottom to top. And so we'll just kind of start at the bottom and work our way upwards. One thing I really love about this model is just how many different details were factored in to allowing the legs to feel very rigorously mechanically detailed. You have the Mask of Creation from G2 acting as a knee pad there. You have some of the G2 armored pieces interfacing with LEGO system elements, interfacing with Technic, with actual pistons being used here, with Hero Factory Raka 3.0 heads being used as the kneecaps. It is just so impressive how this model integrates so so many different Bionicle elements, system elements, and CCBS elements, but it really makes them feel very cohesive and part of one whole. Now, moving onwards to the upper part of the leg here, if I can go ahead and retach one of the pieces here that actually did just break off. Wow, one of the pieces actually just snapped off of the leg here. I'm gonna have to be pretty careful with reattaching this back on, but once we get that reattached here, let me see, there we go, that is fully reattached. We can take a look at the way that the upper leg is done. Now, it does tend to fall over a little bit, and when it falls over, little bits and pieces do fall off of it, which is a little bit annoying, but again, it is something that you kind of have to deal with when it comes with having a model being built that is this intricate and this detailed. There's going to be stuff falling off of it no matter what you do, and sure, there could be some better mocks or better building techniques done to mitigate this, but for the most part, I feel like the builder did their best to integrate as much detail as possible while still allowing it to be fairly stable in the way it's built. Now, where was I? Yes, the upper leg. So the upper leg is a little bit more simple than the other parts of the leg. It is a pretty standard Technic construction with different parts of joints, but I, again, really love the usage and attention to detail, having all sorts of different smaller pieces integrated into the leg itself to really attach and really capture the curves of the model itself. You have the Hero Factory and Chima Beast Claw element being used here, curving upwards to allow you to kind of see the way the thigh curves upwards around the leg itself, and you even have some of the Ninjago crystallized Samurai X helmet elements being used to add just that little bit of extra detail to the knees themselves, which is a fairly new piece and not one that I've ever seen being integrated in a Bionicle mock. Moving upwards to the torso, and this is honestly a work of art. It integrates three different Olmacs to really great effect, and that is something that impresses me greatly. This is a really fantastic way to sculpt the chest itself, utilizing the Olmac piece as armor, which is a really, really smart way to use such a specialized Bionicle mask. It is almost like magic to me, how the chest is formed. I don't fully understand it, and I did even build it myself. Like. I built it, and I don't even remember how all of this comes together. It is genuinely really impressive, everything is adhered on really tightly, and it's very solid too. None of these are going to be falling off, even if you're rough with it during play. It's just one of the most impressive and solidly built chest pieces that I've ever seen out of any other Bionicle mock. Of course, going on to the rest of the torso itself, you have a good integration of some of the Ninjago crystallized dragon scale pieces being used as system parts on the side, but again, adding into that reptilian look and feel for the aesthetic of the model itself. And of course, on the back, you have a really nice integration of multiple different Elex spines to almost make it feel like energy is coursing up the spine of the creature itself. And now I want to talk about the head. The head is something that really impressed me about this model because I feel like it is one of the most detailed heads I've ever seen out of pretty much any of the entries done for this. 
Where most people will typically use the Urnax spine when depicting their golden skin beings, this one does something completely different, utilizing the Raka 3.0 head upside down as a jaw and then brick building the rest of the head, making it almost look like he has some sort of a crown that is built into his skin. It feels reptilian, it feels otherworldly while still retaining the Bionicle look and feel. It is utilizing system, Bionicle elements, CCBS pieces, claw elements, all fitting together to a masterpiece of a head, and this this is easily one of the coolest parts of the model for me in particular is just how well the head is designed. It just is one of the best heads I've ever seen. Now, moving onwards to the way that the arms are designed, I do want to shout out the particular parts usages in the arms themselves, which are really, really impressive. If this piece will just stop snapping off there, I'm just having some trouble with the way that the legs are built. but. Moving this onwards, you can see that the arms themselves are very, very, very intricately detailed while still allowing you to pose them up very nicely. Zooming in on the arm construction here, you can notice some of the Ninjago crystallized fire sword elements being integrated into the arms themselves. You've got some of the new 2023 finger elements from mechs being used, and surprisingly, you can actually still get a really good range of articulation out of the arm despite all of these pieces being utilized to add on to the detail of the arms themselves. It's something that I find really impressive with this model is how much detail it manages to pack in while still feeling like one cohesive whole. While it does get a little bit cluttered, like I feel like maybe this was one too many pieces of detail, it is really cohesive in the way it comes together, and I'm very happy with the overall detail on the arms themselves. Even as you move upwards to the front of the arms, again, just kind of struggling with getting this standing here, you can see that over here there are really nice system elements being utilized right around here just to flesh out the details in the arms themselves. There are gold Borok teeth being used to cover up the joints. Everything feels very, very solid in the way that the arms are constructed. And it almost makes the lower arms, which basically are just a CCBS shell and a CCBS claw element, feel a little bit under detailed in the fact that they pretty much are the simplest pieces of the entire build. They basically just utilize a big shell to form the upper part of the arm, but everything else is so detailed that honestly, I can give that one a pass. Now zooming outwards, I think it's now time to talk about the overall aesthetics of this model. The golden skin being is described as beautiful and terrifying at the same time, covered in golden skin, and I definitely feel like this does capture the terrifying part of it. I guess beautiful is subjective, but I personally think it does feel very regal and feel very godlike in its aesthetics, which is absolutely what the builder was trying to get across. The only thing that I don't really understand is why does it have a launcher? I guess to kind of fit it in with the rest of these sets, like this sort of makes sense if you were to imagine this as a Bionicle set, but I don't really know why a launcher was included. I feel like the Golden Skin Being wouldn't actually use a launcher. Obviously, it just creates people's dreams in reality, so I don't really know if it makes sense to actually have a launcher, but the good thing is that, well, you can always just leave it off. It is just attached by one bar, after all. Overall, aesthetically speaking, I am a big, big fan of how this model looks. Obviously, there is a reason why it won. This almost feels too good to be a Bionicle model. Like, the amount of detail in it is so much that it feels otherworldly compared to other Bionicle models. And I feel like it is a fair transition to now bring alongside some other representative samples from the Bionicle universe to really see if this does make sense in the world. Right next to him is Terex here, which is obviously kind of your standard Glatorian size of build. It's just a pretty simple one, which you can see right there. And I've also brought alongside Samad. Of course, you got to have Samad from Samad's Tale, who was kind of the, one of the main characters in which the Golden Skin Being was introduced, or at least in the story in which he was introduced. And here you can see them standing next to each other. A standard Glatorian barely comes up to the Golden Skin Being's waist, and a Gori is seated directly below its legs. I mean, he barely comes up to the knees themselves. So this is absolutely a gargantuan model. It is one of the most expensive and biggest Bionicle models that has ever won a Bionicle fanon contest. But to me, it is really, really worth it, and I definitely feel like this does fit the aesthetic of what Greg Farshti was trying to describe as the golden skinned being. Sure, there are a few different aspects to it that I feel like maybe don't necessarily feel like it fits in the Bionicle world. It feels like there's so many system pieces and so many intricate details that almost make it seem like it was coming out of a different sci-fi world entirely, but overall, I am very happy with how it looks in general, and I feel like this does fit very nicely in the world of Bionicle, especially as the Golden Skin Being is supposed to be otherworldly. It is supposed to radiate this unknown presence. Overall, I'm going to give Believability in Universe an 8.5 out of 10. 
It's very, very detailed, and that's not a bad thing, but it's almost too detailed to fit in the Bionicle world, but I still feel like it deserves a pretty high score. Overall aesthetics, I'm going to give an 8.5 out of 10 as well. Love the way the aesthetics work. Sometimes it gets a little too cluttered in small different parts around the body, pulling your focus away from what's supposed to be the main subject, but it never does it too much, which is why it's getting a very high score. And for building techniques, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I feel like I learned so much about how to make biotical models just by putting this together. It honestly blew me away by just how many different intricate techniques were done for the way this was constructed, from the arms, the legs, to the head, to the torso. Everything was completely mind-blowing and how this came together, so this was really, really fun. And lastly, for posability, that's probably going to be the lowest score of this. I'm going to give it a 6.5 in terms of posability. That's really only because it's very, very difficult to get it to stand in a regular standing position. You really have to fiddle with it. It tends to fall over a lot, and when it does fall over, different bits and pieces will fall off the model. While I do love the way you can pose the head and pose a lot of the parts of the legs, I feel like you do have a little bit of restrictions in the way the legs move up and down here. You can't really get them to move a ton, and there you can see it just by moving it around, pieces are falling off. The same can be said for the arms. I like how poseable the arms are, but unfortunately, you can't really get it past a certain point, so it's definitely something I do want to point out about this model. Overall though, this is a really impressive Bionicle build, definitely deserving of the mock prize for the fanon contest, and I hope you enjoyed our review of the golden skin being by Vara. Alright, and with that we have summed up our review of the fan-created golden skinned being. Of course, this is not canon, but it's a lot of people's head cannons now that it has been one of the winning models of the fanon contest. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the golden skin being model. It's a really cool one. It definitely is so much more detailed than a standard Lego Bionicle model. I'm a big fan of it, and I hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more Lego news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon, and bye for now.